Since building our first electric motor over nine years ago, the industry has changed a lot. Every year, the number of companies promoting some form of electric propulsion drastically increases, making it more and more accessible, but also more and more difficult to figure out which motor is the right choice. So this year, we're visiting METS, the world's largest trade exhibition of marine equipment, material, and systems. And our goal is to meet with as many manufacturers as we can to find out just how many of those emerging electrical motors are viable options for sailboats just like ours. All right, we have a plan. We have about 26 pavilions to go see and each and every one of them is focused on electric motors. We marked them all out on the map and we're gonna go see what they have to offer. With so many companies marked on our map, figuring out where to start isn't the simplest of task. But who better to start with than the original, the grandfather of all electric motors. Do you want to maybe start by talking a little bit more about Elko and how long you guys been in business yeah, so, and what are you guys focusing on? Yeah, so Elko started in 1893 uh, with the Chicago World's Fair. Uh, we built 55 electric launches um, that passengered over a million people throughout that uh, six month exhibition or nine month exhibition. Um, 130 years doing electric propulsion. Wow. So electric actually came first. Um, Elko made the first diesel engine too, actually, and the first planing boat in history. What inspired you guys to start with the electric motors? Um, it was honestly, it was a, um, the designer of the World's Fair said that he didn't want it noisy. Um, he wanted it quiet. So what are you guys focusing on now? Like, do you have, um, like, I noticed that you guys have outboards now because you, you started off with inboards. Just inboards, yeah. So we've been doing the outboards for about 15 years now. Um, it's just a much broader market. It's a traditional, what you would call gas outboard frame, yeah. um, which people are used to seeing. And um, so it's just based off of a regular outboard. So it performs just like an outboard would. Yeah. And the, so the inboards mostly are on sailboats, I would assume. Right. But what's the smallest and the biggest yeah. size that you guys produce? So this frame here goes, this is a 612 and a 20 horsepower. Mm -hmm. um, and we go up to 200 horsepower in the, in the inboard. 200. Yep. Yeah. So you guys also deal with um, like let's say, like uh, more like canal boats as well or bigger ferries and things yeah. like that. Yeah. We have four uh, work boats here in the Netherlands um, that we just finished this past year. Um, so yeah, this is a great market for us here. Mm -hmm. 40 inboards. Have you guys thought or do you guys do uh, like regeneration, for instance, like bringing back the power to the battery? So the the inboards, our, our inboards will regenerate. Okay. Um, the outboards do not because there is a, a um, gears in that lower leg. So to reverse it, it doesn't give you um, it doesn't give you enough back in yeah. return. So, uh, but the inboards will regenerate. That's really cool. Uh, yep. would, it, would it be possible for someone to actually see the data if they wanted to? Um, yeah, our engineers can tell you what you would get back um, in regeneration. Okay. Yeah. I don't handle the inboard stuff. I'm an outboard guy, but um, but it <laughs> is an answer that we can we can get. Well, thank you so much. Awesome, for your great time. to it was meet you. Super nice awesome. talking to you. Nice to meet you. Being on a show like this and meeting dozens of people on a daily basis like this can be mentally taxing. So before we dive further into this, I just want to take a second and thank BetterHelp for sponsoring a portion of this week's video. You guys may already know I've been a huge fan of BetterHelp for several years now. And while things can seem positive on camera, like every other human being on this planet, I also go through some personal shit sometimes. And having a professional licensed therapist to talk to goes a long way. And I'm not a big fan of face-to-face -face interactions when it comes to therapy, so the good news is BetterHelp makes finding a therapist much, much easier. BetterHelp can match you with one of over 30,000 therapists on the network. And you get connected with a the therapist that is not only trained to listen, but also trained to assess your personal therapy needs. Getting started with BetterHelp is super easy. You fill out a questionnaire, and from there you are matched with your personal therapist. And in most cases, within 48 hours of being matched, you can start scheduling your therapy sessions, whether it's by phone calls or video calls, or even text messaging if that's what you prefer. Starting with therapy can be difficult, and it's a huge commitment to open up to someone about your personal life. And I get the importance of finding the right person, which is why if you feel like the therapist that you've been matched with isn't the right fit for you, it's so easy and so convenient to just switch without any additional cost or without worrying about insurance or without worrying about 
finding somebody else in your local area. Over 4 million people have used BetterHelp for therapy, including me. So if you feel like this is something you could benefit from, then definitely check out our link below. It's betterhelp.com slash sailinguma. Clicking the link not only supports the channel, but also you get 10% off of your first month. So on that note, let's get back to Mets. Over the last 150 years, there have been more and more electric boats, but battery technology has always been the limiting factor. But with evolution of lithium ion batteries in the last 10 to 15 years, the electric motor industry for boats has evolved tremendously, leaving room for some pretty innovating stuff. Is it okay if I mic you just because it's super loud here? We'll just do this. Perfect. Yes. Sure. Yeah, that was. Uh, like that it's okay? Yeah, absolutely. Maybe we can stand here in front of yes. the Phoenix. I'm turn you out. <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> okay, so it's gonna be on YouTube later. Yeah, okay, yeah. We're just okay. making a video about all the innovations in electric motors, nice. and then okay. we, we stumbled on you guys like we have to ask. So yeah, tell us about Finex and how long you guys have been in business and what exactly is it that I'm looking sure. at. Sure. So our name is Phoenix. We exist since four years, and uh, since this summer we have launched the industrialization of uh, our motors. So you can see it in the tank, but I will explain it here. Absolutely. So we make motor without propeller. We replace the propeller by this this undulative membrane. So to understand uh, how well it's functioning, we make the inspiration from a jellyfish. If you see a jellyfish swimming, mm -hmm. the red part is going to undulate like the jellyfish. So when you are in the water, the water will enter in this way and go out in one direction, only moving like that. Okay. So That's no rotative part, uh, only undulative membrane. We wanted to propose uh, something new and uh, we wanted to replace the propeller. So that's why we propose it. And we came with a few benefits from this technology. So first of all, I think is the safety. Uh, as there is no rotating part, you can put your hand, you will not get hurt. Yeah. So the electronic magnets are inside this strong part. So compared to a propeller, it's uh, more robust. What's the, uh, the power capacity for this motor? Like how strong well, is this? It's a two kilowatt motors. So you can compare it to a four or five horsepower. So it's dedicated to small embarkation, small boats. Yes, okay. Is it something that um, somebody could just buy today? or is Yes, it in this one is available on the market, so okay. you can already buy it. We produce it in the north of France. We have 80% uh, of the motors that came from France. And uh, after that, we are producing a, a bigger engine that will be 150 horsepower. We have one membrane on the top and another one behind, and they will move in a mirror effect, imitating the dolphin or the whale. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this one is in development, it will be on the market next year and it will be dedicated to bigger uh, boats. There's a lot of electric motors out there, they take the same gas power outboard and it just replaces the brain with electric. Exactly. But like you and guys we, are... But we still have propeller. Yes. Exactly. If, if, if we think propeller exists since uh, 200 years, so I think it's time to propose something new. Yeah, sure. I totally agree. Well, super. Thank you so much. Thank you That's very awesome. much. Thank you. Is that electric? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's our electric system. Uh, we didn't know you guys did electric yet. <laughs> yeah, actually we were the pioneers in 2017. Yeah, it's yeah. It's not a new electric propulsion system, but it was, uh, it is uh, connected with our Hellmaster X uh, rigging components. Gotcha. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can see it's not a plastic version. Yeah, it's yeah. a high quality. And it's a rim drive, it's so a you've got drive. magnets in there. Correct. Very cool. What do you guys normally put this on? Uh, we don't sell to end consumers, it's only for specific boat builders, we okay. have the control with the boats. It's 3.7 kilowatts, yeah. uh, but you cannot compare with a normal combustion engine. Right. It's a, you make the calculation, could be a, like a 9.9 .9 horsepower, but it has too much thrust, much more thrust. So, uh, big houses, you can move it. Right. Top speed, 10 kilometers, it's not a, for a fast boat. But around here in the canals, that's all, right. all you need anyway. For the canals, yeah. With a rim drive, is it possible to get regen out of it? I know it's not really built that way, but if you're gonna like put it on a sailboat somehow, or yeah, like, is that technically possible? Or technically, it's possible. Okay, yeah. but it's not something you guys are like pushing. No. No. Yeah, okay. You want me to explain it like to yeah, you? Yeah, explain you're gonna have it. Explain it like um, I don't know who you are. <laughs> Okay, perfect. Yeah. yeah, so this is our uh, electric motor, Remigo. Um, it's quite unique because the battery is inside. Um, so in, in this category, you have a few other motors, but ours is the only one that pretty much looks like this, this sort of rudder shape. Uh, it has one kilowatt of uh, electrical power. 
It has a bit more than one kilowatt hour of battery. So it means that if you run it at full power, you get a bit more than one hour of runtime. If you drop that down a little bit to 60, 70%, then you can actually get around three or four hours mm. of runtime. Nice. Um, so yeah, uh, usually the main customers are either people with bigger boats and have a smaller dinghy on there to make like shorter runs, uh, but it's actually powerful enough uh, to power smaller sailboats as well, so anything up to around one and a half ton will also yeah, be perfect. Day sailors just want to get out of the marina and go sailing. Yeah, yeah exactly, sure. exactly. Uh, yeah, those were actually our first sales. Some uh, J70 sailing boat uh, owners, racing boat owners. Yeah, because it looks like this is adjustable. Yeah, exactly. You just have three bolts right here uh, because we sh we just have this one motor uh, that we sell. One size fits all. So yeah, just loosen these bolts and then you can put it to any height you want. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Right now, obviously, the this um, uh, stick is for uh, steering. Uh, it also has a few other party tricks. For example, if you put it like this, it locks it in place. So this is especially applicable for the sailing boats. So we're also introducing a new gadget, which is our remote control. Once you turn it on, it connects. Uh, and then you can just um, run your motor remotely. Nice. Like, uh, we no used to wires have, running to the getting yeah, a throttle and an exactly, external. Nothing. Nice. So even with like its base configuration, you just have two buttons here. Push one to go forward. Um, push the other one to go reverse. If you hold it down uh, for longer, it goes faster. If you use two fingers, it just stops immediately. Nice. And like also quite a nice feature if you fall in the water and this, as soon as this loses um, contact, this will turn off. Interesting. So your dinghy Kinda won't acts run as away. a kill switch in a yeah, way, like exactly. a remote kill switch. Yeah, yeah, so you have one here, one here. And yeah, this uh, remote can also uh, quite happily fit in here. It's magnetic. Yeah, of course it's magnetic. <laughs> Yeah, That's if you like wanna if you wanna take it off, actually you rotate it a little bit. So we have it set up so you have three different positions, and in between those positions, it sort of pops out. USB C rechargeable. USB C rechargeable, okay. and the magnets won't be seen like that in the right. final yeah, version. Right. Yeah, yeah. This looks a bit 3D printed. It, it, it is very yeah, yeah. 3D printed. That's why you're at uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just did our best to keep it absolutely as compact as possible. Pretty much wherever we could we removed as much material as possible, made things simple, elegant, and yeah, that's how we were able to get this size. Uh, Including like the two blade propellers, so yeah, when you're carrying I mean, you it, you can don't have, have like a third blade sticking out. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, nice. Can people actually buy these now? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, nice. um, yeah we have a, a warehouse full of uh, motors ready to ship, so right now, this is, I think, the first fair where people can actually come here, nice. place the order, and yeah, in one week it will be shipped. Nice. So right that must now, feel yeah. like pretty exciting, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. actually. Well, we had to get a forklift, so that, that's a, that's a nice experience. Um, what what are you selling them for? Like, what's retail? Um, so yeah, so the price, if you get it from us, uh, the customer price is two thousand two hundred euros okay. plus VAT. Yeah, nice. and that so like right in there with like a decent three four horsepower yeah. gas. It's all in the same. Yeah, way. yeah, exactly. And also the electric motors were all in this similar sort yeah. of category, but obviously with ours, what you get is a, a nicely designed skinny motor with the battery. More design. mobile for sure. If you're putting this on a sailboat, have you guys thought about regen yet? Are you yeah, we, uh, yeah, we have thought about regen and actually the motors technically already support regen. So you, you can actually feel that if you, yeah, you try, can feel the click, click, if you try yeah. the prop right now, you should be able to feel it. Um, yeah, 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 like winding up. Yeah, right. After a little bit of testing it. with this, just because the hardware supports it, so we're like, okay, integrate it in there, see what happens. But we figured out that with this prop, with at most sailing speeds, you don't get much power out right. of it. But, you know, technically, if you take a power drill and drive it, it would. It's charges up. So, and right. when you slide this thing off, this turns into the carrying handle, I think, right? Yeah, exactly. So what you can do is you can just take this whole thing off. Um, and that's another way we save weight because there's absolutely no reason yes, why we need to nothing. carry this around. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then your handle, you just pull it. And then this becomes the, nice. the carrying. And then you can just carry it like a suitcase. Nice. The, the you just like this away today. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually pretty light. That's like, yeah. yeah. Uh, and and well balanced, too. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. I think that's everything Say we can think of. Home. Yeah, yeah. Is there someone here we can chat to on camera about Torquedo and your company and electric motors in general? Yeah. Five I, minutes or so? I, I would um, pass you to... Um, Dan Kika. We're hoping to interview somebody here about everything you guys are doing. Do you have an appointment with uh, somebody from Turkey? No. 
Okay. We're just so rolling. Oh, you're rolling. Okay. On the collar? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You can tuck it inside or outside. It doesn't really make a difference. Does it work? Super. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Perfect. We are Turquito and the uh, company started in 2005. So um, pretty long in the market with a huge uh, experience on electric propulsion. We started with electric propulsion, never did combustion engines. Um, in 2005, this was three years before Tesla came up with the Roadster <laughs> and five years before BMW came up with the i3. So far, far um, before <laughs> that, that whole electric um, uh, idea got popular. Um, overall, we have 250,000 motors sold and 100 thousand of those have been a travel and it's not only a single product it's a whole product range a whole product family well other than the outboards then are you guys doing inboards as well now um, or bigger boats like medium we, size we, we, we do have a really broad range um, so this what we display here is really focused on our new launch travel right, right. but we do have inboards high voltage up to 100 kW nice. um, and so it's a really 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 broad range we, we offer to the customer because I think it's, it's you guys that do the Blue Sea system. Is am I getting that right? Deep Blue? Deep Blue, Deep blue system. No, blue yeah, sea, right, yeah, right. So that's for your bigger bigger boats. And that's like an inboard to a shaft drive um, or is it sail that's, drive? That's basically the Deep Blue is a high voltage system um, based on a 350 volt battery. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, we have recently launched a new one with 80 kilowatt hours. Um, and it comes, the propulsion system can be equipped with an outboard, for example, right. can be equipped with a sail drive with a rudder propeller or azimuth thruster, as you want to name it, um, and of course inboards, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Since you can put these onto smaller sailboats, do they, are you able to regen at all with them, like while you're sailing? Um, no, because um, in that power class, for us, it does not really make sense. Yeah, you can't really because, go fast enough. Yeah, yeah. And, and normally in a, in a day sailor, you don't have your transom uh, in the middle of the boat. Right. And when you have it um, somewhere on the Nearly side, you it. always, it always tends to turn while you're trying to regenerate, you need to pull the rudder against it and you have just added a lot gotcha. of drag. Makes it sense. doesn't make sense. We do have hydrogeneration for our um, high voltage system. Deep Blue um, can do um, hydrogeneration. We have uh, um, last year developed a new algorithm with a really big step uh, um, forward in, in terms of regeneration power. Nice. And um, so for a 25, 50 kilowatt motor, it makes perfectly sense on a bigger and a bigger yacht. Yeah. They have really um, cruising speeds. Um, somewhere five, Double eight knots in the bath, yeah. um, and, and then you have a, a real a real gain of energy with the hydrogen aeration. Uh, so do you guys have published data on regen in particular, like on their larger boats? Is that something that you guys like are focusing on, or is this sort of a, a um, bonus? Yeah, to be honest, it's kind of a sidekick, so to say, because yeah. um, as I said in the beginning, um, our um, our business really kicks in in commercial applications, right. um, like the so um, the power boats, uh, the, tug, the yeah. ferries, the um, the ferries doesn't yeah, make sense yeah, yeah. to equip ferries with a, with a um, hydro generation. Makes sense for some uh, millionaires' yachts, yeah. um, <laughs> and that's to be honest, not not the big market. So this is a Temo 1000. So this one is 1,100 watts, basically, and uh, it is an engine that can uh, propel big dinghies, mm -hmm. like bigger than that, with five or six people uh, on board, or um, sailing boats, like this one, for instance, um, can be up to eight meters long, more or less, depend on the weight, but uh, could push 1,500 kilograms, basically. So the good thing about this one is, first of all, it is um, mounted on a 360 system, meaning that you can actually turn around, oh. but also you can install it from inside of the boat, which most of the time is not possible. You always have to bend to be able to install it, so not super convenient. So yeah, that's cross fingers, like, please don't fall. Yeah, please exactly, <laughs> exactly. Especially when the battery is on, because usually it's pretty heavy to carry yeah, around. Yeah. So. That would be the first thing. The second one is um, that it has um, a removable battery. I'll catch that one. It comes like as a, a cassette battery. I have only one here. So it is removable. So you can just bring it home to charge it. It does charge on a 220 volt, like a computer charger, mm -hmm. basically. Um, takes five and a half hours to charge and it does not have any cable which is also really convenient like the connectivity is all here goes directly here you just 
plug it and you're good to go. What's interesting is that you mentioned that you can put it on a small sailboat, for instance. Yeah, absolutely. Like, would it be possible, is this something that you guys are thinking of, of using the, the motor and the propeller to regenerate power, to recharge that battery? So, um, that is not the goal. I mean, you could do it. Um, that's not made for it and it would take pretty long time to actually regenerate. So you could, if for instance, like there is enough wind or whatever and you mm -hmm. don't need the propulsion, you it, it will regenerate a, a, a tiny bit, but uh, that's not the goal. Otherwise, we would need to have kind of a different propeller to optimize the regeneration. But right now, that's not really the purpose of this one. It would work, but it's not optimized for that. Right. It's more for like pushing bigger boats, and it's also not made to be fast. That's not the purpose of this one. It's really to push uh, weight, but not really to be fast. Got it. Yes, awesome. no worries. Thank you so much. <laughs> perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Dan, nice Hi, to meet nice you. To meet we were hoping to ask some questions about your motors in general yeah. for our YouTube channel. Is that cool? Five yeah, minutes, sure. something? Yeah. Can I clip a mic on you since it's so loud in here? Yeah, okay. Awesome. Put it like there. Looking good. Um, so. Do you want to start with just sort of how long you guys have been in business and sort of a brief intro, pretend you're talking to someone who doesn't know about ePropulsion? E yeah, no problem at all. So ePropulsion, still a relatively young company. We started in 2012 okay. uh, in uh, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Nice. Uh, and it all, uh, it all started with a small outboard, a requirement for a small mm -hmm. outboard, uh, and it was all about getting away from using dirty yeah, yeah. combustion outboards because that technology, as you know, in the marine world is way out of date, uh, way behind the rest of the world, so we had to do something about that. But we have grown quickly. That that, that, that little one kilowatt motor has proved this to be... This little a, one over here? That's exactly yeah, nice. the spirit. That's proved to be a bit of a star. Uh, uh, you know, It's a very simple concept. The motor's in the bottom, mm -hmm. uh, so, so you don't have to worry about gears, you don't have to worry about cooling because it's direct drive and it's being cooled yeah. by the water that it's in. Um, uh, and there is just there isn't much to it, you know. The battery's on the top. Plug in, plug in one cable, and off you go. Um, that's a perfect alternative to a two, three, four, five horsepower petrol outboard yeah. for most people. For small tenders, anything up to a ton, ton and a half, that yeah. sort of thing. So that's a big part of our market. But obviously, with um, uh, uh, you know, investment is a very big uh, uh, part of what we do. So basically, twenty percent of our revenue is going straight back into. R&D, our R&D department now, we're up to about 140 engineers, purely working on R&D. Like <laughs> exactly, so we're coming up with new products all the time. We're just constantly looking at what markets can we give, uh, add value to. Right. Uh, um, then last year we launched our range of inboard motors, that was our first motors on a 96 volt architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then essentially what's happened here now is this year we've just launched uh, the outboards on the same architecture. 96 volt? 96 volt. Okay. So those inboards, those outboards, this pod can all use the same batteries, all use the same system, so it becomes a very simple, nice. almost plug and play system. So the only one that has a built-in battery is a little one kilowatt? The little one is the only one. And that's one. a one kilowatt-ish battery as well? It's uh, one Something. and a quarter, yeah. Yeah, okay, so yeah, like yeah. an hour-ish of full power? If you went full throttle, but you never go full yeah, throttle. Yeah, yeah. You know, you use about three, 400 watts of input power to, to push a little tender. Yeah. Four or five knots. Because you're not going to get up on a plane with that no, anyway. No, you never. So you're just it's not what it's for. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 you know, it's about pushing weight efficiently. Uh, uh, you know, so so yeah, that's three, four, or five knots tops that little motor. Yeah. But that's all you do in a little tender. You know, because again, it's all about efficiency. You know, these things are operating at eighty percent, eighty-six percent efficiency. Yeah. Because, if it, you know, it, again, we're still on a direct drive system. It's all down there in the bottom. So then the motor control is up here and all I have to do is plug the battery in? It's all down the bottom. Nice. All that's up the top here is uh, on the larger one, there's, a, a, there's an internal oh. cooling system and then right. there's an ele electronic drive. So that, that's all you need. Oh, to like turn it? Yeah, so you, you don't need any actuators gotcha. or anything. Okay. Uh, it all comes with it. Uh, so uh, your inboards, those yep. were new last year. Yep. Um, are those more for like, well, power boats as well, but what about sailboats? Sailboats, that's, yes, we're starting to put a lot of that into sailboats and again, small, in, uh, uh, smaller uh, vessels, uh, you know, what's the sort of stuff, about river cruisers, okay. inland waterway vessels, yeah, yeah. all that sort of stuff, gotcha. there's a lot of that. Uh, uh, so yeah. do any of those offer like regen for more all offshore of stuff? Everything, 
Everything we do offers regen. Nice. Okay. Uh, uh, so, yeah. I mean, the power boats, obviously, that doesn't matter, but if you want to put one of those on the back of your sailboat or something to maneuver it around. Absolutely. All possible. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And do you have test boats that these are all running on? Like, do you have we did. published numbers about regen and power usage and stuff? There is. That's all on our website. We okay. have performance bulletins posted on there so nice. people can see what conditions it was tested in, what vessel it was tested in, Perfect. what different input power achieved, what different speeds. Cool. It's all there. Um, yeah. What made you guys decide on 96 instead of 48? Just more efficient, uh, smaller safer, cables? Safer, uh, more efficient, uh, smaller cables, easier installs, yeah, yeah. lower operating temperatures. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It kind of all goes up. Because as far as I can tell, all of the stuff you have is like either a fixed or a folding blade propeller. Like these are shaft drives. Shaft you drives. don't have any like um, like the server prop system, like a, a we haven't done articulating any very propeller. fold or anything like yeah, that. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay. no. Um, and out of all of this stuff, how much of it is actually like for sale? If somebody wanted to just go out and buy one and install it on their boat, all of it? Everything, uh, even that. The ones that we've just launched, you could order that now. It'd be delivered in the spring of next year. We're oh, okay. Ramping yeah, yeah, up yeah, production but it's not now. Like, it's not like a year it's out. It's not a year out. Yeah, no, no, okay. no, no. Nice. Yeah, they're in production now. Nice. That's yeah, good. Yeah. Very much. Pleasure. Great. Nice talking to you. Thank Thanks. You. Mm. The number of small outboard companies offering an electric version is amazing to see. But what we found even more impressive were all the hybrid and pure electric inboard motors at the show. Many of these companies have been converting boats for years, but now with the shifting market, they're starting to showcase their electric solutions more and more. But how many of them are really good options for small sailboats? And more importantly, how many can recharge your battery bank while sailing? Uh, my name is Christian Ophoff. I'm a founder of Omega Grey. We are a company located in Germany and we specialize in the field of electric propulsion for ships and yachts. And we do this by using mainly automotive proven components because we have a background from the automotive industry and uh, we know how well these um, components are developed and tested and they perfectly suit uh, to the application of a ship. Yeah. And we apply our own control module to make the components work as a system. You guys are working with Mercedes to get batteries? Yes, exactly. So automotive batteries out of their electric cars? Exactly. Nice. So we are able to integrate Mercedes-Benz batteries. Uh, we are very proud of this partnership since it's like a state-of-the-art battery. Uh, and Fisher Panda provides like very reliable systems since years tested. Mm -hmm. And uh, these uh, motors and systems perfectly suits for a sailboat, for example. Yeah. Yeah. It's a low RPM. Mm -hmm. It's like 800 RPM. Yeah. Direct drive, perfect. shaft drive. Are you guys doing yes. any sail drive stuff yet? Not yet, no. Yeah. It's direct drive yeah. and shaft drive. Yeah. It, getting an electric motor to spin a prop shaft seems to be kind of the easy part because it, it's just turning with a thing on the end, right? Yes. But it's, the, it's all that management system and how it works the battery and integrates with the controller yes. and the throttle. That seems to be exactly. the much harder part to do well. It is indeed. We basically do everything to keep the system alive yeah. because we know it's, it's not like a car. It's like a car, if it has a crucial failure, you can just step on the right. side of the road and yeah, you can, can get stop. out. <laughs> Turn it off and try But the boat again. is different, you know, you yeah. cannot get off. Yeah. So it needs to run all the time. And that's like also how you need to rethink the part of how to control your system. Because a critical failure cannot result in, please drive by. Mm -hmm. A critical failure needs to result in, I am available to have full power with my electric yeah, propulsion yeah. system. Yeah. And that's like a different thinking and a different approach in all these systems. Yeah, with doing it on yachts, have you guys thought about or incorporating any kind of regen into the system? Or are you just getting power from solar or, um, or generator? Yeah, yeah, so basically we are able to charge the batteries via solar, via generator. Um, we are actually able to integrate um, a fuel cell Okay, yeah, hydrogen, uh, sure. It just depends on the interfaces yeah. and also like from shore power. These okay. are the ways you charge your boat. Super, thank you very much. That was thank you. great. Nice Appreciate to meet it. you. Yeah. yeah? Assume um, we didn't just have that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, my name is Reinhard Snook. I'm uh, doing the sales for Kreutler uh, for 70 years in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. Um, Keutler is an uh, Austrian-based uh, firm uh, building engines, electrical engines, mm -hmm. uh, 55 years. So we can do from 500 watts up to 120 kilowatts. Nice. Um, and yeah, I always say, say, tell me the boat and I'll make it electrical. <laughs> 
uh, because of the, the range that we have. Right. What's your sort of primary market that you guys are working uh, on? I think we are more on the professional market sure. than on the Commercial, private market. The ferries, tour boats, barges, yes. houseboats. Yes, and rental boats. Yeah. We do a lot of rental boats. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we lose the market to the new competition mm -hmm. due to the uh, pricing level of sure. the others. But, sure. uh, the quality, we, we, uh, we survive them. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Customers have to pay the money. You mean you don't make your motors out of plastic? No, <laughs> not at all. No. Nice. No, we have uh, uh, bronze propellers and things like that. Yep. Uh, I was noticing it looks like a couple of these rotate, like 360. Yeah, this is a, a rudder propeller uh, that can be used uh, in a ferry, in uh, all kind of boats. Uh, but you can make it 360, turning 360. Uh, but we can also make it 2 times 90 and then we can go forward and reverse on it. Right. So, yeah. so in canals with commercial yep. boats, the maneuverability must be fantastic. Better. Because rather than a bow thruster that's kind of small and weak, yep. you get like a full-size yep. motor. Yeah, right. yeah. you have a full-size motor and you can uh, turn uh, the engine 90 degrees so you can push the boat sideways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice, yeah. nice. Um, what, so you get 500 watts all the way up, so you guys do sailboats. I see a picture yep. of one here. Yeah, we do sailboats, we do motorboats. With a, but spinning all the way around in a circle. This is a, uh, a sail drive engine, it's a, there in the corner. Um, it's a straight engine and we, uh, yeah, we can supply that from 2 kilowatts to 75 kilowatts. So are they capable of regen like yep. while you're out sailing? Yep. Is that we, something where you rotate the engine 180 degrees or does it stay in the same? Uh, we have two, two types or with a, a fixed propeller yeah. or you turn it around and right. then you have your folding propeller, you open it. Right. And then you use a, a kind of engine like this, but uh, uh, nice. yeah, then it folds open and then you, you, and you have to regen. It. Yep. Do you guys have published data on regen? Like different boats, different water speeds, different engines, or because uh, every boat's different, it's hard every to... Every boat's different. Uh, you need to have a minimum speed of four knots. Yeah. Otherwise, you do, do not re regenerate, then the speed of the propeller is too low. If you're sailing, in, say, in Holland on the IJsselmeer, yeah. Um, yeah, then it's not a good idea to regenerate if you travel throughout the world. Yeah. And then every energy that you can make is, is it's good. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you're you very welcome. much. Awesome. Bye-bye. We are a combi, we are a producer of electric motors mm -hmm. for uh, the marine world, mm -hmm. boats, uh, over 60 years. Nice. Uh, we started with an outboard motor, we have on the left side of the stand. And we have uh, yeah, also hybrid motors mm -hmm. and uh, complete inboard motors until 25 kilowatts. Nice. Is that your sort of primary market, is the like medium-sized boat? Like yeah, until 25 meters. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's like a pretty, the yeah. pretty big chunk of the and, market. Yeah, and at this moment we have uh, much people that want a hybrid solution. Yeah, yeah. For also or diesel or hybrid. Canal boats or yeah, sailboats or more, more canal boats, but last time also sailboats. Okay. Go electric. Yeah, yeah. And put out and take a pot in it. And oh, uh, you guys do pod drives yeah, as well. Yeah. Super cool. And then uh, you have a sailboat with pot. Yeah. Right. Uh, so you guys are focused on the electric. So the hybrid systems you're working with a diesel manufacturer yeah, to like yeah, do whatever yeah, your bolt yeah, is yeah. on the front. We, we, we produce we engineering the skit right. for uh, all kinds of motors, uh, Yamaha, Soleil, uh, yeah, yeah. Nani. And, and all that. Yeah, and then you can choose uh, a 6 kilowatt, 10 kilowatt, 15 kilowatt. Nice. Or you have a greater, when the motor is gr bigger, you have an other skit. Right, right, and that goes forward. So can you do, like if you put the transmission in neutral, you can run it off the yes. motor itself, yeah. the electric yeah. motor? When it's in neutral, you can run it on, on fully electric. Yeah. And when the diesel is turning, also, this is a generator. Oh, okay, so it's like it's a giant your, alternator. Yeah, so you've yeah, got a six kilowatt yeah, alternator. Yeah, yeah, yeah very yeah. nice. Yeah. So do any of your inboard ones then, if you put them on sailboats, are they capable of regen? Like powering when you're yeah, on the sail? Yeah, yeah, a little. Not, 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 not fully. When you put a six kilowatt on a sailboat, yeah. it's not uh, uh, generate six kilowatt. Of course. Of course, it, 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 most of the time, you know, I think thousand watts, one kilowatt. Depending on the speed yeah, and stuff yeah, like that. Speed, yeah. yeah. Do you guys have any published data on that? Like for test boats or boats that have yeah, been installed? Have data. Yeah. Okay, cool. Because that's always good to know. Yeah, yeah. See how like which motor dragging yeah, through the water, yeah, yeah. what speed yeah. creates what power. Um, now we have all kinds of uh, diagrams. And yeah, nice, like nice. Because yeah. that's the, to us it seems like that's sort of the reason you want it on a, on a, on a sailboat particularly. Yeah, yeah. Unless you're doing day sailing or racing. Yeah, yeah. You can like go long yeah, distance, yeah, yeah. generate yeah. all your own power. Yeah, yeah. And everything you guys have here is something that people can like buy and it's... Yeah, we can buy with a distributor, but uh, sure. we only we reproduce it. 
in the Netherlands. They make uh, the uh, complete motor in the Netherlands. Uh, oh, very cool. So everything. everything you manufacture your own motors. Manufacture ourselves. Very cool. Very nice. You can retrofit this onto your yeah. diesel. When you have an existing diesel, yeah. we, we make a bracket for that diesel type. We, and when we don't have it, we engineer it one. You fit it on, you place the motor on it. And then you get a six kilowatt and alternator six kilowatt, and a six kilowatt electric. Yeah, you have an alternator and a six kilowatt electric. And yeah. this is coming out of the aft side of the yeah. of the transmission, yeah. so you're not having to deal with the inefficiencies of the transmission yeah. either. No. So, it's so now it's in the neutral. When you see, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in the neutral. Oh, yeah, there's yeah. no resistance yeah, no. there at all. You can, then it's fully electric. So the worst, like, the hardest part would be shortening your prop shaft by yeah. two centimeters. Yeah, or yeah it's two centimeters. Yeah. You have to, well, you could probably just slide it out yeah. two centimeters, honestly. If you have uh, two centimeters space, yeah. it's possible. When yeah, you have no yeah, space, yeah. it's not yeah, possible. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. One of the really cool things about Combi is that their diesel hybrid, which is similar to others, where it's a diesel engine with an electric motor attached aft of the transmission, so you can kind of have best of both worlds. If you put the transmission in neutral, you can still use the electric motor to get regen or to move the boat around a marina. Um, or if it's engaged and the diesel's running, you can use it as a six kilowatt generator, which is awesome. You can charge your batteries up super fast. You don't have to run your diesel engine for hours at a time just to charge your batteries. What's really cool about what they offer is a custom plate, and they have some available for standard engines, but if you have an engine that they don't have a plate for, they'll manufacture one for you. So you can retrofit that electric motor onto any diesel engine so you can still have the benefits of electric without having to rip out your diesel motor and only install electric which is a really cool solution for everyone out there who wants to be electric but still has a working diesel and doesn't really want to fully commit to all electric yet. You can spend the money on the electric system now, you can get a small battery bank that you can motor in and out of the marina and get some regen and get lithium batteries you can get good house loads off of, but then still keep your diesel for the long range motoring if you need to, which is really cool, we've never seen that before. I am Laurent Zavaro from uh, Transfeed France. It's a subsidiary of Transfeed. Transfeed is an Italian company that is in existence from 65 years, doing a lot of stuff like hydraulic transmission at the first. Mm -hmm. 15 to 20 years ago, they started to move to the greener ground because uh, hydraulic transmission are more for uh, mining mm -hmm. and grinding and all that stuff. And after that, in 2017, we bought Belmarine. It okay. was a Dutch company, and we started installing O engine inside. And uh, we now have, I think, one of the best hard working uh, system in the world. We have something like 3,300 system functional wow. in the world. Nice. And well, electric and electric hybrid and electric, in electric hybrid and everything. Yes. Nice. So, what's sort of your primary industry then? Uh, like we are working for professionals. Yeah, Our okay. primary goal is professionals. We also work for leisure industry, but more to the yards and to private right. people because yeah, we are for professionals. So, the, the, end, so the canal boats and the tour boats and the little canal small boat, ferries tour boats, all that kind of work nice. boats. Uh, we also do some uh, leisure boats, as I say, sailing boats a lot. Every, every time it's more because we have yeah, yeah, yeah. reliable noiseless engine. I drive master is really great. And yeah. Do you guys do sail drives? We do sail drives, we do a lot of things. We have a new one. I don't know if you've seen it on the Innovation Center. It's called the Squid Drive with a sail drive up to 45 kilowatts. And then you got jet thruster. Yeah, I was wondering lateral. what that was. Because we had demand for bad maneuvering system, mm. bad maneuvering boards that wanted to have extra boat thruster. So we can manage also the boat thruster with only one Water. That's gotcha. nice. Very yeah. cool. And we have, for example, a cell drive just behind there with my colleagues. Uh, okay. And so, um, in the in the leisure industry that you have worked in, have you guys? Do you guys have any out in like sailboats, kind of like ours, the mid thirty to forty foot sailboats? A lot of our electric boats, the boats that are meant to be electric sailing boats, are catch and run around fifteen meters. Fair enough. And do those boats, are they able to get any regen from your system? Yeah, sure. Are, are there, is that, do you guys have like known data published on that? Or is it sort of, it's, I know it's different for each motor and each prop and everything, but like. No, actually it's not a problem of motor or prop, it's a problem of the hull. Because 
every boat is different. Right. For example, your boat has a big keel yeah. that is in front of the propeller. So in the end, you get not the best through of right, water right, on right. it. So you cannot have the same region as, I don't know, a catamaran with not anything below. Right. So it's particular to all the boats. For example, we've done a boat, a very nice boat, a monohull in France that's called the Morito, the Virgin Morito 888. Um, and this boat with a 7 kilowatts air cool is getting 500 amps, uh, 500 watts, okay. up to 700 watts from his region nice. at 5 knots. Yeah, okay. So nice. it's really great. Yeah. We also have bigger boats with bigger engine, a lesser oh. interesting propeller, and they got a lot less regen. So right. you can have everything. It's not a matter of the engine, it's a matter of the world system. <laughs> it's amazing how many different electric motor manufacturers are all trying to do yeah. a different kind of version of the same thing. When the reality is like to make a propeller spin with electric motors really easy. Yep. It's just there's there's efficiencies you can squeak out of it here and there and you can put a lot of R and D into getting a bit better here and there, but like to us, at least, the point of electric is that it's so simple and so robust and maintenance-free and just easy, easy, easy. And then when you try to overcomplicate it, then it becomes into the realm of headache that you just don't want to have anymore. Uh, the, the complicated point is that everybody wants to do this business on the thing. Yeah. So we've seen a lot of company emerging the, the last three years. I. I'm sorry for them, but I think most of them will be gone in some yeah, years, yeah. but that's it. Or the R&D will be bought up and used uh, somewhere else you know, or whatever it is. Yeah, that's how it um, goes. There are a lot of companies today worthwhile talking about and that are doing good things. Um, but it's not so easy to have a working system that don't have any bug in the program, yeah. that have a nice, nice RAM, for example, for the throttle, something yeah, yeah. that is walking fine it's so such a simple thing but getting that throttle feel right it seems to be very difficult because like not all throttles are created equally uh, we've been testing all of them today and like yeah, finding so neutral and figuring out and there's a some are too small some are too big yeah, like it's not so easy but in the end it's uh, part of the job actually the display too is important but yeah well yeah the throttle is actually the most important thing because in, when it's dark you have everything that's Going soft, the throttle is really important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So yes, we place a lot of work in the throttles. We have a lot of throttles available actually, so it's nice. And that's a good point. They are really tough. Yeah. That's a good point. Nice. <laughs> they Super. resist a lot. Awesome. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. It Appreciate was nice it. meeting you. started around 10 years ago. Uh, I got invited into the company five years ago by Cosper. Our main target is uh, decarbonize the marine industry, of course. Mm -hmm. We already changed uh, two shipyards going in the early stage, actually, uh, already four years ago. So we're quite uh, confident that we are one of the leading companies in this. We really do uh, big systems is one of the core parts. Then the second one is these power boats. And what we see here is this turnable sail drives, an integrated system for uh, like 40 to 50 foot mm -hmm. uh, smaller sailboats. So that's our uh, bread and butter, let's say. Uh, we are one of the first companies, or we are probably the first company until somebody proves me wrong, that is producing two uh, super yacht style boats per month now, a uh, region of 50 to 150 ton, fully hybrid, up to one megawatt of batteries, everything integrated. Nice. It's interesting because it's very rare. A lot of the companies out there that we talk to, they, they, they produce the electric motor, for instance, but the batteries are separated and the generator is separated. Like everything, yeah. the, everything is separated other than even the propeller sometimes is not even part of the same company. It's easier for us if everything is from the same company because we can solve everything in-house and there is not a lot of energy lost with talking to third supplier companies. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a big advantage and we're going to keep on going that way. Batteries we started producing because simply there was not good enough batteries on the market. So we were getting very fed up. Uh, so we started our own battery production four years ago. And that's exciting news is the solid state battery that we demonstrated yesterday. That battery you should probably have on your boat too. So I'm going to go back a little bit to the motors that you guys built. You guys say that you, um, you focus on power boats and mega yachts, but also on the sailing industry as well. Yeah, so we have this turnable sail drive here. 
you can see there is propellers and there is propellers, yeah? But the feathering propeller doesn't have the good angles, never, not in forward and not in backward. We have made tests with boats driving with the fixed propeller, which is actually optimum in driving forward. And we get 25% more speed at same RPM around seven knots okay. for the same kilowatt injected. So that's because the propeller is much more efficient and it's made for this. If you have a feathering propeller, he's not good in forward, he's not good in backward, but he doesn't produce much drag when you are sailing. Now, if you want to go real echo, what we recommend is having this turnable sail drive with a fixed propeller. So you're either pushing or you're recuperating. And when you're recuperating, you turn the 180 degrees and you have the good attack angle and the optimum performance of this propeller to recuperate. Other companies have these propellers that are variable pitch mm -hmm. and they change the pitch. Uh, these propellers, this is a very good idea, but these propellers are never streamed optimum, not in forward, not in reverse, not in recuperation. So we believe that is the better idea. Others have good idea, but we think this is the better. Idea. Yeah, yeah. So by recuperation, you mean like regeneration? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Do you have uh, like, Do you have the data, the regeneration data available? If you not were from interested? the not from this yet. We yeah. have on the bigger boats. Okay. Uh, but uh, everybody is very uh, freaky about this uh, regeneration, and when they start to get out there and sail, they realize they don't use it so much. And this is what I tell everybody, but nobody believes. The regeneration is an overhype. Yes, it's there. Yes, it's good. Yes, it's good when you're crossing Atlantics. How many times are you doing this in a year? If you ask yourself truly, uh, it really makes a lot when you're above eight knots. Mm -hmm. If you are in a small boat and eight knots, it will also slow you down. But then you charge your batteries. Then you charge your batteries, yeah. This is now in a saltwater test uh, in Hamburg. Uh, it's running its hours, but we do not have it on a sailboat yet. So yes. we do not have uh, true data that we can tell you. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. After three exhausting days talking to dozens of manufacturers, we were impressed by the number of companies taking the leap towards electric propulsion systems. So much has changed since we visited the Met Street Show the first time three years ago. And even more has changed since we've installed our own DIY electric motor. But the show is now coming to a close and we have one more person to talk to before it's time to wrap things up. I'm Oliver Hardis. Um, I'm originally from Australia, but I now live in Finland and work at headquarters at Oceanvolt. And Oceanvolt is the market leader in electric propulsion with hydro generation. So recharging your batteries while you're sailing, which is one of the coolest features because it's genuinely free power. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, no one else in the world does it better than we do. And it's it's pretty amazing what some of our R&D guys have come up with. I feel like if you have a sailboat, that's the only thing that should matter is being able to charge your batteries while you're sailing. Yeah, no, you're right. There's, there's plenty of other companies that do electric propulsion and they all have pros and cons mm -hmm. as well. And we're not right for everybody. But uh, it does feel like we're one of the only ones that are taking regeneration seriously. And it's because we, you know, we understand what sailing is about and, and what sailors really want with their boats. And we work with every customer independently to, to try and make sure that their system matches their needs. And mm -hmm. most of the time, people, when they go sailing, they want to unplug from shore and, and go off long distances and, and be self-sufficient. So why not focus on regeneration? It's, it's, it's like, why wouldn't you put solar on your boat? Yeah, exactly. It took a couple different iterations to get to the silver prop. Do you want to talk about like what you had before versus what you are coming up right now? Yeah, sure. So we, we have a, a range of different products for, you know, suiting different people and, and things like that. So we do have electric sail drives with folding propellers. Some people want to have race boats and they don't want to have, you know, want to have minimal drag and things. And so we offer products that have, uh, can go with a folding propeller. Um, and we also have the servo prop in the smaller size, which is what I believe you guys have. Mm -hmm. um, and that's with the variable pitch propeller. That's a patented technology that our guys have invented uh, up in Finland. They came up with the servo prop idea and that's really incredible technology. The propeller blade angle is fine tuned and automatically uh, adjusts itself. So if you're going forwards, it puts itself in the right, right position to give you the best thrust. And same with reverse, so you actually get excellent reverse thrust, which you don't get with the folding propeller, yeah. uh, because you can have that variable pitch. And then when you're recharging, it puts it in the right amount of uh, the, the right pitch for the propeller blades to recharge effect uh, effectively. 
And then just this week we've been announced as a winner um, in not only the category but overall for the Dame Awards, which is a really huge surprise. So that was really exciting and that was for our new High Power Server Prop 25, which um, it's very small for a 25 kilowatt. Yeah, I was going to say, like, if that's the size, I want five of those on my boat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is our scale model, but um, the real one's over in the awards uh, section. So this is sort of like the big brother of our Server Prop 15, which is what you guys have on your boat. Um, so it still has the variable pitch propeller, which is sort of our, our key feature, mm -hmm. but it has a whole bunch of other integrated features. So the cooling system is integrated into it. Um, it takes seawater in through the leg, cools the system and the seawater comes out, so you don't have to have extra holes in your boat. Um, it does have seacock, so you can close them if you want to. The motor controller is integrated into this as well, and the whole thing is serviceable while the boat's in the water. So this is designed for big boats, so hauling a big boat out of the water is very expensive and time consuming so with this you can actually take the whole motor away and the boat doesn't start to sink you don't get water in and the same thing you can take the leg off the boat and the, the hull still stays sealed it seems like on the new server probably 25 the whole thing is flipped so the propeller faces forward almost as opposed to like the regular thing that everybody comes out with it faces aft What's, yeah. what's the rational behind that? What's the idea behind this? Okay, so you're right. Most sailing boats have got the propeller facing backwards, right? Yeah. And that's because of the folding propeller design. If you had it facing the other way, the propeller wouldn't fold. It would just flop open and it wouldn't really work. And then our guys upstairs started thinking like, okay, but then you've got this whole leg in front of your propeller. Maybe that's not so efficient. So they started doing some tests about having it the other way around and they suddenly found it was way more efficient. So because we have our variable pitch controlled pitch propeller, uh, we can have it flipped around. So you can get way more efficient mm -hmm. regeneration, forward thrust and reverse thrust. But if you want to have it facing the rear, you can. You can have this mounted either way. It's, uh, but it is more efficient to have a forward facing propeller. And uh, I think we're one of the only ones that can do that. It's the brilliant thing about electric propulsion. If you buy a diesel, or if you have a diesel in your boat, it just gets worse and worse and worse as it goes on over the next 50 years, right? But with an electric propulsion system, it's just gonna get better because we update our software all the time and we can just drop software updates on you guys and you get you know, better regeneration and more features and things like that. So it's the complete opposite way of thinking because the hardware doesn't really need to change. Copper's been around for a long time. Motors are really you know, all the same thing. It's the software side of things that the uh, advancement starts to really take place. Yeah. You have uh, like a test boat that you actually put that on and you're trying to find the right numbers and trying to calculate. Like the data, do you have that data, especially for region, available somewhere, like publicly available? Yeah, so uh, for the high power server prop, it is becoming more available the more testing we do and also the more customers who go out and use it. So the X47 has got one at the moment with a, with a folding propeller, mm -hmm. although that's not really going to be as good with regen as our servo prop, obviously. But the more sailing that they do and the more numbers that they do, um, the more data we all get. Um, so we do, we are testing it constantly on our test boat and we have our test tank, which um, as well, we can test all our products as, as, as we build them. Um, but yeah, we're, the thing is, we're not gatekeeping. We're not trying to hide this knowledge or this information. We want everyone else to benefit from it. and. At some point, sometimes it does sound a bit too good to be true, like, oh, I'm sailing along and generating kilowatts of power, like, what's, what's the deal with that? So that's why we're so free and open with this sort of data. We're not trying to hide it and, and keep it to ourselves. We want everyone else to see how great a boat can be and how fantastic things can get. Super. Well, thank you so much. Absolutely. And, pleasure. yeah, it's, uh, I think we have everything, I think we have everything and more that we needed. Oh. All right, we did it, guys. We did it. We talked to every single electric motor company that we could find in this show. And we Our have the <laughs> patinaed, very well-worn map to prove it. <laughs> it's only held on by like this tiny little section. Can I just have the top half? Oh, yeah. oh well, that's it. That's uh. This was, <laughs> the bulk of them were like up here anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, we started oh. off with a list of about 26 that we could find online, uh, but just wandering around, we ended up finding about another 20 more. So we interviewed a little over 40 electric motor companies in three days. We've learned a lot. We've confirmed a lot. 
Um, and uh, I hope you guys have learned something too. Um, it's, it's been a very interesting and enlightening experience, to say the least. Absolutely. At the very least, we, we hope that this video will bring up the conversation, will open the discussion mm -hmm. about electric motors and about what's available out there, because there yeah. are a lot. Yeah, there's, there's, there's way more that we could talk about in just one video. It was very cool to see so many um, companies and new companies and also established companies that are starting to dabble in the marine market, like Bosch, for instance, was kind of cool to see here. Um, there's a lot of companies that were just sort of taking electric automotive stuff and bringing it into the marine market, which is interesting to see. But yeah, every year it just seems to be more and more of these companies mm -hmm. uh, popping up with new and innovative things. So it's really cool to start to see the market sort of shift towards that. Yeah, and for the sake of this video, we of, of course did not emphasize on the electric motors that are focused on power boats yeah, or the lot. electric motors that focused on commercial um, aspect of the industry. We've yeah. solely wanted to mainly focus on the ones that are at least interested in sailing and also in regeneration, which is for us the biggest deal when it comes to an electric sailboat. I think, I think that's where we were optimistic about finding another company that could provide viable regen for a sailboat. Um, because to us, that just seems to be like the main reason mm -hmm. to put an electric motor on a sailboat is to sort of make an unlimited amount of power so that you can have an unlimited amount of range and you can just be self-sufficient and never need to go to like a fuel dock or plug in or have a gen set. Um, but yeah, we were a bit surprised not to really find one. A lot of companies have just said no, it's not something they're focusing on. There's a few companies that would say yes, it's technically possible, but they didn't really have any more data than that. Uh, and there's a couple of companies making claims that we're gonna have to go and do some research on and look into because they kind of sounded too good to be true. It was definitely interesting. But we are exhausted. Uh, we're flying back to Italy in a few hours. And yeah, it's been an exciting three days. This trade show is really, really cool if you're at all interested in the marine industry. It's not well advertised because it's not a boat show, so it's not really advertised as like a place for consumers. It's mostly business to business, but it is a really cool place to come and look around and see what's available as a consumer of these goods because it's just amazing to have this many companies all in one place. Uh, and you can talk with them and you can see what their latest offerings are and their new technology yep. and kicks like new startups and all of it, it's all here. So. It's a really cool place. I'm glad we've been coming every year and watching it grow. So if you want to see us, we'll definitely, we'll be back here next year, 2024 Met Street Show. And until then, we'll see you next week on YouTube. Cheers.